Learn to stand upon your word and I pray that I I may come to know you more than you will guide me in every single step I take and every day I can be aligned unto the word. Now the chorus, come on. Every day it's you I live for. Every day I follow after you. Every day I walk with you, my Lord. Let's sing that again. Come on. Every day. to have you with us today. It's a great morning. I'm telling you. Isn't it cool? I think it might rain today, but I really don't care. Me neither. You know, the Lord is with us, whether it's rain or shine. You know, the rain falls on the just and the unjust, and you know, our gardens are like this. So sure let's look forward to that. <laughs> I, you know, I just am enjoying that. I want to welcome you this morning. Make sure you know the lay of the land. You guys know to get a program. You want to make sure you have that for your scriptures today. And also inside your program are the announcements, which that's my job to share with you, let you know how we live it out every day, what mm. goes on every day, every minute of every day, what, what's happening here in the body. Um, and there's lots of things that are going on. Number one, it, I first want to mention, is that, you know, June 21st is coming up. You know what June 21st is? Uh, Nobody told him it's yet. It's not my birthday. No, the first day of summer. Well, of it summer. might be. I don't know. i got to check that Equinox thingamajig. Trisha, it's not my birthday. It's a is Sunday. It? Yes, no, it is. It's no, it's Sunday. not a birth. Not your birthday, but it is a day oh. to honor guys like you, because oh. it's Father's Day. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. You know. You know. And that's the thing. It, for some reason, it, uh, we all kept thinking it was the 14th, but it's not. It's the 21st. We got a little bit of time. But what's really cool about that? Should is I tell you what I want? Never mind. Okay, that's between you and your children, but okay, you can okay. share, Frank. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> the Go ahead. Never mind. No. <laughs> the list is he wants so, a tie. The list is so long. <laughs> I want a new he wants a Hawaiian shirt. tie to go with his Hawaiian shirt. Anyway, uh, no, we're. <laughs> that's called a lay. A lay, that's exactly right. <laughs> hey, uh, no, what we were going to do, actually, we had an opportunity to share at Mother's Day. We had a great time. And Father's Day, we know, Dad, you got a lot going on. Um, we're actually doing something very special at the coffee bar that day. So a great opportunity uh, to invite your dads or maybe somebody who's been a dad to you, a father fi figure in your life where they've got some special things planned, some special breakfast kind of brunch things going on at the coffee bar. So we would encourage, come, participate 
participate in the service and bring your favorite dad or father figure with you. We would love to have them join us for worship. And uh, the theme of the day is super dad. So superheroes and, you know, honoring them for the heroes that they are in our life. So we want to want to encourage you to do so. So get our superheroes there. And that, that little guy standing on the washing machine just cracks me up. <laughs> <laughs> I've had kids do things like that. Also coming up on the Operation Christmas Child team is raising money for the postage to send the boxes to far off lands to send Christmas gifts to the children. Um, and they're doing a Bunko fundraiser coming up the 27th. That'll be the week following that on a Saturday. Make sure you see one of the ladies from the one of the ladies from Operation Christmas Child. Are you the only one here this service? Teresa? Hmm. Uh, she has tickets. Uh, she may be the only one here this service, but if you know any of the ladies, please make sure that you uh, you stop by and see them. It's only $10 and a great opportunity. Of course, they are still collecting small toys. There's a box on the ministry counter, and of course, you can make a donation there as well. So we just appreciate um, all the help to make that Operation Christmas Child a success, to put Christmas and the love of Jesus into the hands of a child far, far away. On the back of the program, several things going on. Toolbox Ministry is still working on hanging ceiling tiles you can help them out and um, the ladies uh, we have a ladies conference we're going to in August it's just to save the date but I actually do have some brochures out there so ladies if you're interested in joining us or would like to know more about it <clears throat> there is a little more information available today over on the ministry counter and speaking of our ladies group on Thursday nights we are doing a special Bible study starting not this week but the following week um, and it's actually kind of cool because it's a six-week study, but it's all online. So you could do it from wherever you are. You can sign up and you can actually participate from home. But we are still meeting on Thursday nights to have our opportunity to be together. So if you'd like to come and join us, you are welcome. But if you have to miss one, it's okay. You can participate online or um, through their email devotionals. So we're just looking forward to that. Information is in your program about that. And the Porter County Fair is coming. Someone told me that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, in July. In July. 26. 26. Is the day we'll be there. Yes, and it's not just that we'll be there. We're having worship there. Yes, so make sure are. you're setting our calendars and, and marking our places so we don't show up here. We want to show up at the Porter County Fair for worship that morning. It's at 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock. Yeah, not sure our normal you time. tell everybody else and uh, uh, bring some people with you because it's a big white tent. And uh, we want to get folks in there and... Uh, just enjoy being together in worship and enjoy the fair. Wouldn't it be great to fill that tent with people who it, love Jesus it, or that would be cool. people that don't know Jesus? Yeah, be both. Wouldn't it just be both. awesome to yeah. fill that place. You know, it's a it's a great it's just such a great experience to worship God out in his creation. And although we have a tent over our head, the cows lowing in the background just really helped to make that happen. <laughs> The See, they're on the program. The cows lowing. will be there. The, the wrong season. <laughs> the wrong season. It's never the wrong season, Frank. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Anyway, but just to remind you, and in the afternoon, um, immediately following the worship service, we will be doing a sing, an old-fashioned uh, sing, and there will be lots of entertainment, lots of singing of songs, and um, the LifeBridge is also hosting that. So it will be a great day of family entertainment, and also, because you're there before 10, you get into the fair for free. So <laughs> that's another nice benefit. Um, Kairos Ministries is also asking for us to start looking at our Jesus cookies. We need, to, we need to start baking those again. We'll have the recipes and information out. Bill is not here this hour but we'll get that to you but uh, get your get your aprons on it's time to start baking those cookies you know I had the opportunity to go to um, Westville at the last time they did one of these these things and the stories that they tell the gentleman you know about the life change that Jesus makes in them is wonderful but the cookies are such an instrumental part of that they know what they mean they know that they mean forgiveness they know that they mean you know uh, yeah forgiveness or you know um, Mending a, mending a broken relationship. And in those kind of places, that can mean life or death. You know, it really is an impactful token. It's just a cookie. But it means so much to them, to those who have nothing. And more importantly, because in the way it's given through your hands, through your prayers, through your efforts, it has even more meaning because now it's coming from the body at large. We're welcoming them into the body. So just want to encourage you, if you have opportunity to, to bake some cookies, this would be a great um, opportunity to serve the Lord and those who are in a situation that 
we may never know, um, but we can still love them and encourage them to their relationship and their walk with God. So lots going on, lots of ways that we can be involved and we can serve the Lord. Also make sure you fill out your Connect card so we can stay connected and make sure that you fill out your section there on prayer requests and praises. You can drop that in the offering bag a little bit later during the service. And right now we're going to continue to worship because I hear Frank is playing. He is welcoming us to worship at this time. Kind of dusted off this this song. It has a part for the men to sing. It has a part for the women to sing. And then there's a part we all sing together. Oh 
you're my prince of peace Cause you're my prince of peace And I will live my life for you That's fun. You guys did that very, very well. I was really, really, uh, really pleased with that. That was good. Um... I'm going to throw a new song at you guys. I'm just saying, okay? Um, this is a very simple little worship song that uh, I uh, came across. And um, it, it just, it's, it's uh, doesn't, s there's not a whole lot of words to it, but the expression and the meaning of the words that are there are very powerful. And it's directed right from our hearts, right to God. And the chorus, very simple, is You alone do deserve my worship. You alone deserve my praise. Alone, you alone deserve my word. 
belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Jesus, it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. It all belongs. It all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Jesus, it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. So this week is about um, spirit leading, being led by the Holy Spirit in prayer. And I know that you have a, um, a pattern, a routine that you will do when you are seeking God's will, when you are looking for the Holy Spirit to lead you. And so... Um, would you share with 
everybody your pattern. What is what is that? Well, first of all, it's um, the when I'm looking for God to lead me is consistently. So I try to make it a part of my regular routine that I spend time in His Word because I believe that about 80 or 90 percent of what he wants us to do is revealed to us right there and um, but I also include journaling as part of that and uh, I have a few things that I like to do when I'm reading I like to have a Bible um, actually over the last couple years I've tried to use electronic forms of these things and I've recently just said nope I need a paper Bible a highlighter and a pen and as I read I highlight things that stand out to me um, and I'll make notes in the margins of um, why it stands out to me what what's hitting me about what I just read um, I do use um, a reading plan from like you version or something like that so I don't have to think about each day what I'm going to read. I, it's laid out for me. And um, God keeps working through that, so I'm going to stick with that. The series that we're doing this summer is focused on the Holy Spirit. And we're looking at all, all different aspects of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity. Last, uh, last summer we focused on uh, Jesus specifically. And, and did that throughout the summer. This summer, it's the Holy Spirit. And, um, and last week, well, each week I have somebody teaching me something uh, that goes along with that particular area of the Holy Spirit. For those of you who don't know the person that was speaking in there, that's actually my wife, Tracy. And um, I asked her to talk to me about and talk to all of us about her routine that she... Uh, that she does daily. Um, if she misses daily, it's, it's regularly. It's many, many times a, a week. To get herself aligned with God, because I see that she does it, and she does it consistently, and she does it well. She and I have different styles and approaches, and so the reason I asked her on video is that she can share kind of one style and approach, and I can talk to you about my style and approach toward it. Both of us are seeking the will of God. Both of us are are praying in the spirit, if you will. And um, these are things that may be helpful to you as you are looking to seek God's will in your life and as you are looking to pray in the Holy Spirit as well. Scripture, as she said, has lots to say about a lot of things in life. And this is no exception. There are plenty of things uh, that we can learn straight from God's word, which is, by the way, inspired by or by the Holy Spirit, or God-breathed would be another translation of that. Um, and we have examples of the Holy Spirit being poured out on people and prayer being an integral part of that. Uh, they join together constantly in prayer along with the women, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and, all, and uh, with his brothers. This is before the Holy Spirit came and rested on all of them who were in the room. Um, after that, they received the Holy Spirit in the, in the form of those fiery tongues. You might know that story from the day of Pentecost. They went out and they started preaching, speaking in tongues in different languages. And uh, as they were speaking those different languages, the people who were there visiting that knew different languages, they, they came from different um, language groups, the people that were there visiting that day could hear the gospel message about Jesus. After that, it says that uh, they, they were cut to the heart. They asked, what shall we do? And he, brothers, what shall we do? They were, they were Jewish. It was kind of a Jewish festival that brought them in town. And Peter said, repent and be baptized, each one of you, for the forgiveness of your sins, and uh, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you, for all your children, for all who are far off, all whom the Lord our God will call. And so he, he announces that. And then there were, it says, three, about 3,000 people baptized that day who received uh, Jesus as their Lord and Savior and received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then it goes on to say, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, 
to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Prayer is an integral part of this. Later on, and you'll see in the back in the, the book of Acts, if you read through the book of Acts, that prayer seems to precede big events that are happening. So they pray, and then the, the prison walls shake, and all of a sudden the door falls open. Or they pray, and an angel of the Lord comes along and, and breaks somebody out of prison. They, they, they pray, and, uh, and then they see God in the heavenly realm as they're getting ready to go home because they're being stoned to death for their faith. They pray, and big things happen when they pray. Here it says, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God boldly. Praying in the Holy Spirit makes all the difference in the world. Many of you know that the mission here at LifeBridge is to empower one more to walk together with God. It is simply a, a combination of two scriptures. One we refer to as the great commandment, to love God with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. And we call that walking together with God, simply tapping into the imagery of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, walking together with God with nothing hidden and nothing to hide. The second piece is the, the Great Commission, to go and make disciples of all nations. Jesus told us to do this right before he ascended into heaven. And so that commission to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, teaching them, and trusting that Jesus will be with us always until the end of the age, we have turned into empower one more. And so you put those two together and it becomes empower one more to walk together with God. Last week I, I, I shared... Um, kind of a next step of the vision. And uh, I'm grateful as I look around here this morning that it didn't frighten people away. Or maybe you weren't here last week and the ones that were did get frightened away. And so uh, uh, when you hear it, it'll, it'll mess with your mind. But I said that um, God is, is going to be calling us to a next stage of ministry where Life Bridge is a hub and we are starting to purposefully put things in place to reach out beyond Valparaiso. Porter County, and even the surrounding counties here. Starting to put things in place where we can purposefully minister to people long distance. Some of this has been driven by people who have asked for it. People who have moved to Indianapolis, have moved to Texas, have moved to Arizona, have moved to different places around the country, Florida, and, and they, they go and they look and they say, I can't find a church like LifeBridge. I mean, you guys have spoiled me. We really love LifeBridge, but we can't seem to find a church that is doing what LifeBridge is doing. And so how can, we, how can we find a church like that? And we try to help them find it, but depending on the city, um, they may have difficulty finding some, some place that is, that is biblically based, that is spirit-filled, and that is um, empowering people in an environment of grace. And so... What we're going to be doing is starting to try to figure out, okay, if they move to that spot, how can we empower them to maybe start doing church services in their living room? How can we empower them to stay connected to LifeBridge? Can we do small groups long distance? I mean, right now we're doing worship in China because we have somebody who's Skyped in. Can we think outside of the traditional box and me, being, of course, the, the nerd background and computer science degree and so forth, I'm not afraid of saying, let's use technology, whatever technology we have available to us, to the greatest extent, to reach and empower the greatest number of people. And so I, I shared last week with number, uh, a number that, that might scare people away, uh, but I hope it won't. I said, let's just think in terms of empower one million to walk together with God. Now, the reason for the one million number is simply to take it outside of our control. To take it outside of the realm of possibility in this town. Valparaiso has 33,000 people. You can't reach a million here. Porter County has 167,000 people. You can't reach a million there. We have to think outside of this, this county. We have to think outside of maybe even this state. Yes, we could reach a million if we went across Chicagoland. But as we do that, we'd have to think about how to reach different cultures, different language groups, different mindsets, people coming from all kinds of different perspectives, because Chicago is quite a melting pot if we start looking across Chicagoland. If we looked across the country, the same thing would happen. 
So if we say empower one million to walk together with God, I shared it with you because I believe that the Spirit was leading me to share it. This has been on my heart for over 12 years now. This has been building. So this is nothing new, and this isn't a, a flip of a switch. This is simply starting to bring you in on the conversation that God has been having with me for nearly a dozen years now. This week, it's so important in all of this. Because how do we know when it is God who is leading? How do we know when the Holy Spirit is the one putting the thought in my mind and, and guiding me towards something, and when it is not the Holy Spirit of God? How do I go to God, the Holy Spirit of God, in prayer? We're sharing some of that on Tuesday nights, and if you uh, haven't joined us yet, we're doing what we like to refer to as a bad box class. Uh, that's what it's gotten nicknamed. It doesn't matter what I call the class. Everybody calls it the bad box class, and so we just you know, share it that way. It's essentially a class about learning how to walk by the Spirit. Every Tuesday night, uh, for about eight weeks, we will be doing this, and we're just getting started, and so it's not too late. If you'd like to come and join us, it's 6.30, we have food, and then around 7, 7.15, we get started with the study itself, and then it goes until about 8.30 on Tuesday nights, right here in this room and also in the cafe, kind of takes uh, all the way through. We also have uh, uh, children's ministry and youth ministry, actually the youth join us in the bad box class, and so you're welcome to come if you have children and youth as well. Come on down. Bring, uh, bring them with you. And let's figure out how to seek God's will. I had a group of, of people from here at LifeBridge, people that have been referred to as maybe coordinators or builders, uh, servant leaders, etc. From, from over the past year. I brought them together and uh, uh, we talked about this and we prayed and we worshiped together. And we, we focused on God and asked God to lead us. And that's what you saw some of those clips from. Uh, those were from Friday night and Saturday morning as the, these people were breaking up into small groups, seeking God in prayer. It's incredibly important that we make sure that whatever we do, we are doing it led by God, led by God's Spirit, and doing it in the name of Jesus. I'm going to let that sink in for just a second, and actually I'm going to give you an opportunity to uh, just, uh, if you want to go run away, um, you could do that right now, because I'm going to let you go ahead and get up and walk around and greet somebody this morning. Hopefully you'll actually come back to your seats afterwards, uh, but go ahead and do that. Greet somebody this morning. What do you tell them? I'm glad that you're here. So, so after you spend time in the Word, then you said you have a journal. What, what do you do with your journaling time? With my journaling time, um, I direct it straight to God, um, my writing and my process. The, but I also use an acronym. I was taught an acronym a long time ago to help with uh, prayer, and it's ACTS, A-C-T-S. And it reminds me to, first of all, uh, a is adoration, and I take time to worship God and praise Him and to put Him in His place, which is above everything, and remind myself that He is in control. And so I just spend some time focusing on Him in that way. Uh, C is confession, and so at this point I try to um, remove any obstacles that might be in the way of me hearing from God through His Spirit. And so I'll, I'll spend time asking God to show me um, where I've sinned, things, opportunities that I've missed, um, anything that might be, uh, things I might be holding on to too tightly, anything that's going to be getting in the way of me hearing God's leading. Um, the... One of the things that's made this section very personal is uh, my when I've started learning more about the Holy Spirit because it's not these prayers and um, especially confession is not directed outside of me. It's directed internally. 
um, because the Holy Spirit dwells within me. He knows everything that happens. He knows the motivations of my heart, and he can reveal that to me as I um, ask him to, and I sit quietly before him and um, wait for him to show me what he wants me to see. Um, then, so I've done A and C. T is Thanksgiving. And so I remember to be appreciative and thank him for the blessings that I have. And S is supplication. And I take time to pray for um, the people God's put in my life, my family, uh, people, friends, people at LifeBridge, um, my ministries, anything that's going on. I spend some time praying about those as well. Like I said, Tracy has her, her style, and she tends to like to sit quietly with a journal. She'll write in the journal. You'll see that a little bit later on in another clip. I, um, I'm more of, a, of an extrovert, and so I like talking with people. So I find myself um, having conversations with God, if you will. I imagine God's response to my question, or I'll talk to God and just share stuff with God. Hey, look at this over here. Hey, nice sunset. You're doing a great job there, by the way. You know, I'm just kind of talking to God about whatever's going on. I'm a little ADD, I think, too. And so, uh, but God loves me anyway. And so uh, we, we have conversations. That's kind of my style. Both of us, though, are seeking the will of God, and both of us end up applying the same principles that we find in Scripture to our particular style of prayer. And you can apply these principles as well. Now, there are far too many Scriptures and far too many topics on prayer for me to be able to go into, especially when you're talking about the Holy Spirit and prayer. So what I'm going to do is just share a few basics with you that will set you up for success. In other words, what can I pray about? What can I pray for that will set me up for a yes from God? Okay, uh, The kinds of things we're going to talk about today, God wants to have you ask for. Yes, I said that right. God wants you to ask for these things. And when you do, God will answer you. God will give you these things. And so that's why I'm including them in this morning's scriptures. Here's the first one. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding faults. And it will, not it might be, not if you ask enough times, not if you say please, 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 not if you come to God with some really cool offering that you think is going to buy him off. It just says, ask, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord, because such a person is double-minded and unstable in all that they do. In the bad box class, we end up talking about the mind and how we end up being double-minded or single-minded, and how we can focus our minds on God and get that answer from God. But the bottom line is one thing that God wants us to ask for is wisdom. Asking for wisdom. So we pray, and one thing that you can always pray for is wisdom. Wisdom is really important. Wisdom gives me direction. Wisdom helps me to, to make difficult decisions. Well, wisdom helps me navigate through difficulties in life. Wisdom is incredibly important in our walk together with God, and God wants to pour that out upon us. All we have to do is ask. Now notice something here. The things we're talking about here are going to give you direction in your life and in your walk together with God, and they're going to give me direction in my life and my walk together with God. You can't pray for me on... And, 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 and be sure that God's going to give me wisdom. Okay? Because I might not want it. I might not be asking for it. I might not care. I might not have God in my life. And I might have not have any interest in getting God in my life. 
And so when I pray for wisdom for somebody else, I'm praying a type of prayer called intercessory prayer. What I'm trying to do is ask God to, to remove some of the garbage and the distractions from their life so that maybe, just maybe, through their own free will, they will recognize God. But what I want you to see here is... If you ask for it for yourself, God will say yes every time. I'm going to say it again. If you ask for wisdom for yourself, not somebody else, if you ask for it for yourself, God will answer with a yes every time. You want direction in life? You want to figure out where you're supposed to go? Pray to God for wisdom. Paul wrote to the Colossian church, For this reason, since the day that we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. See, we don't stop praying for other people just because God isn't going to say yes every time. But we still pray for people. We pray those intercessory prayers. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of His will through the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way bearing fruit in every good work, and growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might, so that you may have endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of His holy people in the kingdom of light. Wow, there's so much in this passage. And all I want to say is that these are good things to be praying for somebody else. But if you pray for these things for yourself, God will say yes every time. If you ask God for these things. And notice what happens. That you're going to be filled with knowledge of His will through wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. The Spirit will give us God's will in our lives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please, uh, please Him in every way. The Spirit will lead you to righteousness or holiness, doing what is good. See, we've said before, anyone who knows the good that he ought to do and doesn't do it sins. The flip side is true. Anyone who knows the good that he ought to do and asks for God's help to do it will get God's help. Last week, I said, uh, actually last Tuesday at the Bad Box class, I talked about God's power and how God's unlimited power, the, who just spoke things into existence, that created the heavens and the earth, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, if you are in Christ Jesus, that power is dwelling inside of you in the Holy Spirit. That unlimited power, the power that is greater than any other power that exists, that power is inside of you, and will be unleashed for God's purposes in your life. It will not be unleashed for things that are against God's purposes in your life. So the key becomes turning to God and saying, Okay, God, what do you want me to do? Knowing that you've got the biggest, strongest, most powerful, most knowledgeable, most wise God in your court backing your play. Because it's not your play. It's God's play. God's calling the play. God says, go in and do this. And when you go in and do this, whatever has to happen for this to, to do God's will, it will happen. If, God, if you need resources in order to accomplish it, you need money in order to accomplish it, God says, do this, you go do this, and God will provide the money. If you don't need money, but, but you need a whole bunch of people that are on your side, when you go in here, God's going to provide all the people that are on your side. Because... Because God is at work. This is the God of the universe. And so the most important thing for us to do is not to try to wrestle with God to get Him on our agenda. It is for us to, to fight off the things that take us away from God's agenda. The Holy Spirit wants to lead us. The Holy Spirit wants to lead our mind our hearts, our lives, and our actions. He wants to lead us into a life that is worthy of the Lord and will please Him in every way. When we follow the Holy Spirit in prayer, and then in our life, we will bear fruit for every good work. We will do good works. When we follow the Holy Spirit in prayer, we will grow in our knowledge of God. When we follow the Holy Spirit in prayer, we will strengthened, be strengthened with all power, that power that I just talked about, according to His glorious might. 
so that we will have great endurance in anything that comes our way and patience. And in the midst of that, we will have joy, giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in His holy people. It's a great passage. I, I love the book of Colossians just to begin with. I mean, God is so big in the, in the book of Colossians as you read that. But that's a great passage. Read it, reread it, underline, write stuff in the margins. Go to God's Word. Be reminded, of these are the things that God wants to do in your life. These are the things that God wants to work in your mind and in your heart. Ask Him for it, and He'll say yes. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance, and perseverance finishes its work so that you will be mature and complete, not lacking for anything. See, a lot of times we don't like to pray for this one. In fact, most times we don't pray for this one. But the reality is that this entire process leads us to becoming more mature. It leads us to becoming more mature. Maturity has to do with how well we are aligning ourselves with God in this present day and age, in our life, in our culture. That's what maturity is. People who are mature don't seem to be tossed this way and that by the latest news headline. They're not thrown around by the, the, the emergency of the moment. They don't get all scared and all worried. They just kind of they, they just kind of seem to be okay in no matter what's happening. It, it doesn't matter for somebody who's mature. It seems like what the, what the doctor's prognosis was that week. It doesn't seem to bother them that, that such and so said such and such about them behind their back. It doesn't seem to mess them up when the, the account balance goes up or goes down or goes in the red and then comes back up to the black. They just kind of seem to be a mature person who's walking with God, seems to have joy and, and peace in all of these circumstances. God wants to give you maturity. God wants to take us to a place where we are mature and complete, not lacking for anything. Paul said to the Roman church, I consider our present sufferings not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation uh, waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For creation was subjected to frustration, not by our own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from the bondage to decay and brought into freedom and glory of the children of God. Romans, he's talking in this passage uh, uh, about the reality of the life that we live in. I said this last Tuesday uh, that the, the sort of the ideal picture that we have for our lives is all the way back in Genesis chapter 2, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And we refer to that by saying walking together with God. But the reality is that we don't say that we're trying to become Adam and Eve-like. And the reason we don't say we're trying to become Adam and Eve-like is that Adam and Eve, when faced with temptation and trouble, they failed, they stumbled, they quit. We have someone who never failed, never stumbled, never quit, who lived in a life like our, in a world like ours, a world that's a mess, a world that is filled with temptations, a world that is filled with problems, financial problems and and uh, military problems and political problems and, and, and people hurting each other and killing each other and doing unspeakable things to each other. We have someone who is an example who lived in that kind of a world and yet walked perfectly together with God. And that someone is Jesus. And so we don't say we're trying to become Adam and Eve-like. We say we're trying to become Christ-like. We want to be like Jesus now, there are specifics to his life and his ministry that are going to be different from mine. Jesus was a single man. I'm married. Jesus never had any children. I have three. There are things about Jesus' calling and ministry that are not going to match mine. Jesus need to go, needed to go and die on a cross in order to pay for the sins of the entire world before his life, during his life, and after his life. That's not the ministry that God calls me to. I, I'm, I'm called to a different ministry. 
So I don't try to become Christ-like in some of those specifics. What I'm trying to become Christ-like is this. I'm trying to walk by his, the Spirit in everything that I do. I'm trying to make myself so in sync with the Father so that when God tells me to say something, I say it. When God tells me to go someplace, I go there. When God tells me to do something, I do it. Every time. That is the way in which I am trying to become Christ-like. And that is the way in which God says He will say yes every time to my prayers. If I ask for that kind of growth, for maturity, working toward that end, God will always come along and say, yes, I'll give you direction. Yes, I will give you strength so that you can persevere. Yes, I will give you the words so that you can say it. Yes, I will give you the actions to do or tell you when to stay out of it. Yes, yes, yes. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. I'm in verse 26 now. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. There are times when I'm being tempted or attacked or I'm battling things in my mind and trying to find wisdom and I don't even know how to ask the question. I don't even know how to go to... Go, how to where do I even start? Have you ever felt that way? Yeah, I had to ask God about this, but I don't even know where to start. The list is so long and it's all over the place. It's just a mess. God... I, uh, uh. Wordless groans. God. <laughs> no, I'm not speaking in tongues. I'm just, I don't have words for this. Jesus, take this. What do I do with this? And then listen. The Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And He who searches our hearts and knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things God works together for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. For those who God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said, in these last days there will be scoffers who follow their own ungodly desires. These are people who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the Spirit. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love. That's a strange phrase, isn't it? Keep yourselves in God's love. As uh, it, it, the, the, the antithesis of that is somehow I can do things that, that take myself outside of God's love. We can. It's called sin. We can do things that go outside of the bubble. We can do things to get ourselves out of that garden get, as, as Adam and Eve did. We can do things that are not of the Spirit, that are not of God. It's in our hands. God's ready to equip us. God's ready to strengthen us. God's ready to empower us. God's ready to give us everything that we need to live the life that God wants for us. All we have to do is ask. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring, bring you eternal life. Pray for love. Pray for love. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. You should love your neighbor as yourself. God will always say yes. God will always say yes. God... You know, show me how to love you in this circumstance. God, <laughs> show me how to love him. <laughs>
Show me how to love her the way Jesus would love her. Show me how to be like your son. God will say yes. God will lead you there through God's Spirit. And God will give you what it takes to live that out. Right now we're going to show our love to God in giving gifts and offerings. You never need to feel pressured, not by me, for, for giving financially at LifeBridge. I say that every week and I mean it. If you're supposed to give, God will prompt you through God's Spirit. You can always participate by taking that Connect card that you filled out, fold it up and put it in the offering bag as it comes around. If you put a prayer request on there, use that as an opportunity to worship, to turn it over to God and to say, God, I trust you. I'm putting this into your hands. Let's give our gifts at this time. Um, after you go through the, the A, C, T, and S in your journal, um, you do something with uh, a different style of handwriting. Yes. What, what is that? Um, yeah. I am very task oriented and I'm one person, I'm one thing at a time kind of person. And so when I get in task mode and I'm focused on going on to the next thing, I will tend to approach my reading scripture and journaling as a task. And so I've got to slow myself down. The writing helps slow me down, but then even a step beyond that, I have to remind myself to be still before God and listen. And part of how I've done that is by um, waiting for him to speak to me. And when he does, I record what I feel like he's leading me or speaking to me through his spirit. And I just use a different handwriting. So if I'm writing cursive, I'll print. Um, if it's something that is huge, aha, you know, there's stars around it or bold letters or whatever. But um, I, I make it stand out so I can very quickly scan through my journals and find places that God has purposefully led me. And I, I heard his voice. I he had scripture come to mind to guide and direct me and what I was praying for. And um, in taking that time, remembering that it's not a task and that I need to spend time with God, having two-way conversation. The passage I was just reading from 1 Samuel 23 begins with um, David having this two-way conversation with God that just keeps on going on. David expects God to answer. And um, we need to... I, I try to do that in my own prayer life. And, um, and that's how I model that. Okay. I wanted to let you guys know something that's going on this week and ask for some prayer from you guys. Um, Lily is one of four of our students, and myself and actually my daughter Becca, who just graduated college, is going to be going as a leader. Um, we are going to move in um, Milligan College down in Johnson City, Tennessee. Nope, that was last year. Um, <laughs> Lily doesn't know where she's going, so I've got them. Um, She'll get them. She will. Um, MOVE is a week-long conference that the high schoolers go to where they're really just challenged to think about what God wants to do with their life. Um, think about, just take a step back and refocus and gain some perspective. Uh, we have a lot of fun, um, but God has some plans, and we don't know what those are yet. And so um, we're going to pray for the trip. We're going to pray for Lily. Other students going are Jasmine Gassaway. Uh, I'll probably be here next hour. Uh, Sophie Burns, which I don't see her yet, so she's probably here next hour. Um, and Ella Lenz, who's probably hiding because it's a stage. Um, <laughs> um, I have about 30 rubber bands that say, I am praying for a student at MOVE or something similar to that, and it has somebody's name written on it. In this case, it has Sophie's name. Um, if you are willing to pray for one of these students, I want to encourage you to stop by the Welcome Center. They're just in a red basket, and um, then you can just grab one of those and be praying for that student throughout the week. Uh, if you want to write them a note and drop it off at the Welcome Center or something, they'll get that encouragement when they get back. 
uh, you will probably also get to follow along. I'll try to get some stuff on Facebook if you see me. So do you want to join me, Ella? Do you want to come on up here with me real quick? <laughs> okay. Okay. That's all. Okay. Okay. Um, so will you pray with me, please? Dear Lord, I just praise you because I know that you've done such incredible things through MOVE um, in my own life as well as many other students and um, sometimes huge things like 500 turkeys, but Lord, some of the greatest things that you do are just in those quiet moments in our heart. Um, and so Lord, we just pray that you go ahead of us, that you give us safe travel, that you work in each of our lives just to help us to um, see you a little bit clearer and see where you want to take things. Um, I just pray for your purposes to be accomplished. Uh, I thank you that just all the support of this body um, in this trip. In your name I pray, amen. When God's people pray. It is a very Christ-like thing to pray. Jesus regularly prayed. Whenever I get into conversations with people about becoming Christ-like, we always get it, always, always end up with, well, Jesus was God, and so, you know, I can never be like Jesus because Jesus was God and I'm not. One of the things that I bring into the conversation is the fact that the same God that Jesus was and is is the same God that now dwells inside of you. For those of us who are in Christ, we are a new creation. Our body is a temple for the Holy Spirit. That same power of God is there. It all comes down to being in lockstep with the direction, the Spirit of God. When Jesus said, I and the Father are one, I think he was making a theological statement about his deity. But I also think that he was telling us, I'm always doing the Father's will. Everywhere. I make sure that I'm doing what the Father calls me to do. He modeled that for us so that we would go to God in prayer in the same way. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son that he loves, in whom we have redemption, in whom we have the forgiveness of sins. Jesus went to a place called Gethsemane and uh, he said to his disciples, stay here while I pray. He knew that he was going to die and so he took Peter, James and John along with him and began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed to the sorrow, to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. And he went a little further and he fell to the ground and he prayed. He prayed, if, if, if possible, that the hour might pass from him. Daddy, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup for me. But not what I will, but what you will returned to his disciples he found them sleeping Simon he said why are you asleep couldn't you keep watch for an hour watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation because the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak if we turn to God we ask for wisdom we ask for strength through His Spirit. The Spirit is willing. The Spirit is strong. The Spirit is all-knowing and all-powerful. We can turn to the Spirit and it will overcome the weakness of our flesh. All we have to do is ask. Jesus' temptation, the weakness of this moment, 
was, God, I don't want to go to the cross. I don't want to have to die. But he had to in order to save us. And so he prayed, and he was strengthened in the Spirit, and then he went and did what he needed to do. He took death so that you and I might live. That's what we remember when we take communion. As you take the bread, you can remember that his body was broken. As you take the cup, you can remember that his blood was poured out. Take it to remember that Jesus, when he went to the cross, was led by the Spirit. That he did the will of the Father so that the plan would come to fruition. And ask God to lead you in the same way. To make clear to you what it is he wants you to do today, this week, this month. What direction he wants to take you. Ask him where you are missing the boat. Where you need to confess your sin. And return to him in repentance. Ask him to lead you into life everlasting. Let's take communion now. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust is built my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly trust in Jesus name
also have a pattern with the green book and list of lists of people and you text them, right? Usually sometimes I'll Facebook or um, email, but yeah. Um, so what's that process? I have, um, yeah, I have, I have lists of names. Um, sometimes it's the teams that I work with in student and children and family ministry. Sometimes it's the families that I'm trying to minister to or the kids that I'm working with. And um, I try to connect with them periodically, uh, let them know every night. I pray for them more frequently than I actually get the texts off, um, but I want them to know that they're being prayed for and I want them to feel like um, I'm here to support them in praying for them. And so I let them know, hey, you and your family have been prayed for and uh, if you have anything you want me to be praying specifically for, go ahead and message me back. Okay, do you pray for me? All the time. <laughs> I want to be on your list. <laughs> you are, <laughs> right at the top. <laughs> or like my dad used to say, right? I'm at the top of your list and the bottom of the list, so no matter where you start, I'm always first, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you for sharing with us. I love you. Then pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert. Always keep on praying for all of the Lord's people. Tracy's not the only one with lists. She has probably 200 people on her list. Mine is around 500 at this point. And yes, I pray for you much more often than you get texts from me. We need to be a body of Christ who pray for one another. Pick up the, the uh, wristbands to remember to pray for the students as they go and see IY move. Pray for your spouse, for your children, for your parents. Pray for your small group, for the ministry team in which you serve. Pray for the people that you're reaching out to. Pray for God to lead you, because when you do, God will always say yes. Let's go from here, walking by the Spirit. It's you I live for every day. It's you I live for. Sing it like we mean it. It's you I live for every day. It's you I live for every day. It's you I live for every day. Oh, let them hear us downtown. Come on. It's you I live for every day. It's you I live for every day. It's you I live for every day. someone else to see him in you as well, okay?